I'm never really out there to ruffle any feathers in a way, you know, I, I'm, I'm not trying to upset anybody, but mm -hmm. at the same time, these things, if they're getting shown on the news, you know, I, why can't I go and paint it on a wall? Bit of a gobby mouth, but with a feminine not feel. Sure where, I'm not sure where the idea <laughs> came for for that one, but somehow we've ended up with some big red lips. <laughs> Hello and welcome to The Big Chat. I'm Nicole and I'm very excited today to be talking to someone very special to us here at That Podcast Productions, part of Chatty Hatter, because he actually created what you can see around us, which is a visual masterpiece. Um, and I've done a lot of work with him over the past few years. He's a very inspirational young man and definitely getting more and more known on the scene as it were so um i'd like to sort of say hello today to hugh whittaker known as humor hello hugh hello how are you i'm very well thank you thanks for having me yeah no thanks for coming in i mean last time you came in you were sort of well you were masked up we are we are two meters apart so yeah. we're okay but it's not so easy to talk with a mask on so no. we're um you know we've we've both been okay in that department but last time you were masked up because you were literally spraying what we can see in here yeah that's it um, Which is great. Yeah, it was good. It was quite an interesting one, really. Um, yeah, you ne needed something bright and vibrant for the backdrop. So it um, did. It's quite nice to actually be here and be using it and see it and yeah. see it in all its glory. And actually, the Hatter section there is is all of it. Everything was just Wing winged. I think it was not winged. <laughs> it, it was put together. With great care and consideration. It was good. It, it came I, together, didn't it? Yeah, definitely. Um, but you've mentioned that your your favourite part of this is the three-dimensional letters. And um, yeah, kind of create quite a nice nice feel for the room. I love it. And obviously, the, 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 the kind of, you know, yeah. bit of a gobby mouth, but with a feminine not feel. Sure where, I'm not sure where the <laughs> idea came for for that one, but somehow we've ended up with some big red lips. <laughs> So, but yeah, it's um, and obviously the big chat that is that is what everyone can see. So yep. it really was in something in lockdown, wasn't it? That's that, it. Um, a creative experience that came out of lockdown was when I got in touch with you, having worked with you over the years on yep. lots of different projects, and saying, "Hugh, there's no one else that can come in and take this out of my head and put it onto the walls, as it yep. were." And we did try a few different. We did try, didn't you? Yeah. You tried to do a few different approaches with it. Yeah, so. we kind of went down the um, logo design route first mm. um, and the digital stuff I can do, but it's not really my forte. Mm. And I think we, we kind of spitballed a few ideas and actually found out what didn't work. Mm. Um, and then I think we both decided let's come in and paint. And then from that, I'm sure we can take something that you can actually use as your logo. And I see now, obviously, you've got the lips. Yeah. Um, yeah. Which look amazing. So yeah. that's good. It's, 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 it's really... And we, you know, we're working together on other things. We've got obviously the soapbox that we're going to be yep. looking to do some work with. We've got obviously the soapbox, which is now um, renamed as Tumage Wells Soapbox. There's going to be a bit something special to do with that that we can't really talk about. But yeah. you're going to be working on um, some new visuals for that, shall Definitely. we say. So yep. that's going to certainly bring it into a 3D dimension. Yeah. I what's What's been happening for you? There's been a lot going on. I mean, some people might have seen that you were possibly featured on quite a famous program, Grand Designs. Yeah. Um, Tell us a bit about very that. Very fortunately, um, I mean, I don't know whether it comes down to my skill or how <laughs> I got the job, but my brother, um, Greg, and his wife, Georgie, they won Grand Designs last Wednesday. Um, and the show was great. Mm. Um, I think they came across very well. It was amazing. They've it was done an really amazing compelling. job. Yeah, really absolutely. compelling. Yeah, <clears> absolutely. I think their story was what kind of made um, the piece. And if you haven't seen the episode, I'd advise you probably watch it yeah. because um, it's very inspirational. Um, and they were kind enough to trust me to come and paint something in their barn. Um, and actually, it was quite a new mural for myself. It was black and white. And as you can see, a lot of my work's very vibrant, very colourful, um, quite modern, bold and slick. And what I did for them was um, it was a black and white photograph mm. of the barn six years ago mm -hmm. um and i think that was around about the time where greg and georgie met as well um and obviously it's the barn it was it was the old barn before they converted it so it had quite a lot of sentimental um meaning to them but also the photo uh, sorry the photograph was taken by georgie um because she's a oh, photographer um along with some other amazing stuff she does her felting so she does these like 3d craft courses and stuff so she's wow. very creative herself so it's nice to collaborate with her 
Yeah. Um, and have something in that's going to last. And did you did you work with the did you work with the crew on that? Did you see much of the crew? Did you see Kevin? Did you meet any? Of them? I met Kevin. Um, I actually met him at the pub. Yeah. Um, because at the beginning of the episode, they they had a couple of interviews. In of course, the pub. you met him at the pub, Hugh. Yep. Yeah, I. It was <laughs> yeah, very, but you have got a pub in the family. We should let it. people know there is a pub in the family. It's not just always down the pub. Yeah. No, it was it, it was it was very nice to meet him. Um, didn't say too much. Sort of hello and how how was he and. Um, it was sort of early days. You're not allowed to talk much about the show. It's all sort of, you know, what happens in fight clubs stays in fight clubs. So. Absolutely. Quite right too. Yeah. We're the same here. Yeah. <laughs> Just remember that. <laughs> but I think the, I think the inspirational part for, for those, I won't spoil it for anyone that hasn't seen it because you should definitely go and, and, and watch the episode. But really what inspired me was actually your, your family. Yeah. You know, Georgie, obviously part of that as well is just what, just real passion and real um uh, quite force you know when you want something yeah. you really go for it yeah. you're really inspired despite you know in the case of your your brother and his wife some health issues yeah and you know you're very young I mean I hate saying how young you are but you're you know you've got a couple of decades on me and you're you know you're a young man in your 20s and you've done a lot with your career already which I think is really really something to be very proud of thank you very much um and yeah and also the the work that you're doing the artwork that you're getting out there is it you know it's yeah. had some stick in the many moons ago I mean thank goodness we've got past all those sort of stigmas that are yeah. attached to tattoos and graffiti and all the rest of it and we're allowed to be a bit more creative as human beings but it's it's for the things that you can do. I mean, tell us how that all started. How did that all start, your journey into this um, line of work? It probably actually started through my other brother, Oscar. Mm-hmm. Um, I've, I've got three siblings. Um, and Oscar's older than me. He is a very talented artist as well. And he used to start off by doing black and white portraits of people. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was probably about 16. And he's four years older. And he had done a few. And then sort of being a younger brother, I thought, oh, that's great. He's painted that. Let me have a go. And he kind of taught me a few bits and bobs. Um, he isn't painting at the moment. He's an accountant, funnily enough. Mm-hmm. So at least he can help me with my finances at the moment. Um, but I kind of carried on from there. And yeah, so, so sort of throughout school, realized you can make a bit of money through artworks. So I was taking on commissions, um, but it was never anything too serious at a younger age. Because um, you're local, aren't you? You went I'm to Skinner's? Local. Yeah, yeah, I'm a Skinner's boy. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, artwork, art in itself wasn't massively pushed in Skinner's. Um, I think I'm probably one of, well, I don't want to say, because um, I don't keep up to date with all of my um, my old schoolmates, but I'm one of the only people probably who's sort of doing something artistic mm-hmm. f- from my year at Skinner's, um, although there was some, obviously some very talented people there. Um but yeah, then probably a few years later on, I started progressing and start, um, upscaling my work. And then I did a tribute to a friend of mine, Emmett, yeah. um, with spray cans, with spray paints. So sort of started it through there. And that was that was a really significant piece of work for you, wasn't it, Emmett? Because obviously it was, you know. Yeah. Yeah, it's this is kind of where it all started from. Um, and so Emmett is a very good friend of mine from the age of about four years old. We grew mm. up together on the same street. And w- I think we were probably about seven or eight and we used to watch um, graph videos from over in New York and used to get, get the VCRs and we, from Blockbusters. And you w- vi- watch videos of these guys graphing trains. Blockbusters, which, great yeah, days. Yeah, back in the day, <laughs> and, you know. Go Something go. I can relate to you with there, yeah. just getting that one in. Yeah, see, I, I am old enough to know what Blockbusters <laughs> yes. is. Um, but we used to watch videos and stuff of like people graphing trains. And we kind of obviously were quite inspired and we're young and trying to be rebellious and whatever. Um, so, you know, we'd get paint and we used to paint boards in the garden. Um, but I kind of gave that up at the age, of, a few years on, sort of like 10 or 12, sort of wasn't too fussed. Emmett carried on painting um, and he got very well known for what he did. And he very sadly um, took his life when he was 21, mm. which was, I think, five years ago now. Mm. Yeah, because he'd be 26. So five years ago. Um, and naturally, I thought there's nothing like nothing more I could do than, um, you know, paint a, paint a tribute to him. Yeah. So um, down at a local park, did um, sort of organise the day, had an event, got his family down mm. and um, painted a lo- large portrait of him. So. And that's something that started to become more of a theme with your work hasn't it painting tributes you've yeah. done I mean obviously there was um like you said there was that I mean you've done you've recently done a very quite quite a big well we won't call it a tribute as such but quite a controversial piece maybe yeah, yeah, in the de- park haven't you as well definitely not <laughs> definitely not a tribute um, 
I think I have to say out loud, I'm not a Trump supporter in any way whatsoever. <laughs> and I've had comments through social media saying, uh, you know, thinking that I'm, I, it's, it's a tribute um, to um, the guy that I painted, supposedly, um, a part of the QAnon group um, over in America. But I just, I, I watched the news at the end of the week on a Thursday or Friday, and I, and I was watching the scenes of what was going on in America. And there were these men in fur with horns and like, banging drums and chanting mm -hmm. and it was just so out of this world and like insane and unrealistic i was just i thought what a great image i found this photograph of him mm. i thought i'm going to paint this um the opposite of a tribute really it's kind of a a way of capturing this moment in history yeah um and it will definitely be something in five or ten years when i look back at some of my work i'll be like wow do you remember 2021 it was an amazing piece, and actually, it was Steve. Someone shared it with me, with, and I was like, "Yeah, I know, I know who yeah. that is." And also, I think with that, like you say, it was—it's not a tribute, but it's a political piece. And it—I mean, yeah. it got onto the Economist. They featured it on their yeah, front on, grid, didn't yeah, it? They got, got five point three million, just to be precise. People yeah. probably had a little look at your political piece. Yeah, there. some some of my pieces sort of fly around social media a little bit, um, and and you know, get a few get a few views and stuff. And mm. it's quite nice that I can actually produce work that might make people even stop and have a chat about something yeah um, it might be controversial um i'm never really out there to ruffle any feathers in a way you know I, I'm, I'm not trying to upset anybody but mm -hmm. at the same time these things if they're getting shown on the news you know I, why can't i go and paint it on a wall so it's your opinion um, exactly that yeah. one of one of those posts got taken down so there was two of them if you go on my instagram now mm -hmm. there's still one of the images but i posted mm -hmm. a second one and I wrote a little bit about my views and um, not supporting Trump and, uh, you know, just a little bit behind it. And it actually got taken down within a few days. I got a message. We'll probably get taken down now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I love everyone. Anyway. I love, yeah. <laughs> we love everyone. But basically, I mean, I think the the artwork, you're... You've done you've done a few pieces for me, so yeah. it's and it's it really is art and the detail your your attention to detail is just getting better and better. I think the more you're doing, the better you're getting. I hope, quite honestly, I, I hope so. I it's... think you are. You know, you get to my age, experience, you'll just be, you know, what sky's the limit. <laughs> but I think with tributes and uh, sadly, as you mentioned, your friend Emmett took his own life, which is so sad and something that's you know very close to yeah. our hearts. And you did do. Um, a piece, a tribute piece for Caroline. Yeah. So yeah, that was about a year ago now, actually. It's coming up to the anniversary. That, it was actually just before lockdown because it was the last piece I painted before the world, before 2020 hit. Yeah. Um, and yeah, that one kind of came about because it was so big. Um, it was so big in the media and uh, obviously her as a sort of a presenter and an entertainer always yeah. came across as such a positive person. So there was a lot of stuff behind mental health and how... Actually, actually, a lot of these things people come across with a smiling face, but behind there's lots of stuff that you don't know about. And that was definitely the case for Emmett as well. Mm -hmm. um, when that happened, that was a complete shock to me and a lot of his friends and stuff. So um, I kind of want to raise awareness for, for mental health as well. Yeah. And, and we did a lot of stuff for Young Minds yeah. or Mind Charity as well, which isn't just for the younger yeah. younger people, which works a lot around mental health um, and sort of potentially roots with um, sort of drugs and stuff like that. So yeah. Um, it's all pretty important stuff. And it was, and it was very, I think, it, you know, the piece that you did was was amazing. You know, anyone that follows you will be familiar with it. And it was, it was huge, wasn't it? It was massive. And, but it was also, like you say, she's a very bubbly TV presenter, very popular yeah. in the public eye, young woman. And just, you know, that's, that's it. We're all human. We're all, we're all fragile in our own way. Yeah. And just, I think to highlight that to, your generation, my generation, any generation is is important. So yeah. um, I think people might feel quite differently about it on the year anniversary because, yeah. I don't know, I think the world's changed a little bit since then, hasn't it? There's a lot's happened in the last year since she That's passed. It. Yeah, um, and with, with, with a lot of the kind of um, larger political stuff I've done mm. or stuff around Caroline Flack or mm. I've done ones for other artists who have passed or, um, you know, big graffiti writers, mm. um, uh, a, a writer called Powell, he died um, a couple of years back and stuff. And it's one of those things that obviously I'm busy with, with life and work and stuff. And quite often there's a little window. If I get a couple of days off and something happens, mm -hmm. I just seize a moment. And um, I really do it for my own enjoyment. Um, mm -hmm. The the one with the um, QAnon 
mm. guy from America that mm. I did last week. I just had a, a spare day on Saturday um, and sort of went down there to paint that. If it was this weekend, it would be whatever's sort of current in the news at the moment. Yeah. Um, so don't some... don't do a picture of me, please, you. Thank you. Oh, we do not okay. want to scare I'm the world have, with I'll that. I'll change. Yeah, I'll have to change <laughs> my weekend's plans. You know, and... I mean, you could have some fun, but don't do it. Um, but I'm also in lockdown. You've you've been very resourceful. You've been very busy. You've been yeah. you've been um, creating your own home. I have. Yeah, haven't I've been you? Renovating a house for myself. Nothing quite like my brothers, but um, that's been a, a year into it at the moment. So yeah. that's been keeping me very busy which is also great during lockdown you know you can get stuff delivered to the house like materials and whatever and, and have it. you got creative are you going to get creative with your are you, are you allowed to imprint your flair yeah. as your as your other half have to speak to happy the, for that yeah have, have, have to speak to uh have to speak to alice but uh we've we've got some big plans um yeah but sh- she's great she's got such a creative mind as well um and she does a lot of um furniture work she, she's a carpenter um sort of with her family, she does some really interesting stuff, um, and her interior design is really good. Amazing. Um, she's got a really good eye for that kind of thing. So at the moment, it's sort of the colours and the designs, and I mean, the bathroom at the moment is just a bath in the middle of a room. There's still bare plaster on the walls, and you know, stuff. Visible. What more do you need? Exactly. But um, when it's all done, there'll yeah. be. I'll have some pieces in there. So brilliant. I'm sure anyone who follows me or my work will see some photos of my house. I mean, that's the thing as well. Like more and more people at the moment, we're stuck indoors. And I, I recently, my son's bedroom. You did, you did um, yeah. an amazing Sonic the Hedgehog, yeah. Hedgehog and Pikachu, which is yeah. just so good. Anyone that's not seen it, check it out because it is the detail still. I mean, when I'm in, when I'm watching Mandalorian, which I just love. <laughs> watching my I go into my son's room and I escape into this world and then I've got these characters I mean obviously I'm just a big kid yeah because I've got my own work environment like that too but he loves it and the, and this the depth it's given the room and yeah. actually for just to be that create you you know you've done some little owls in my daughter's room at yeah. one hour we're gonna add owls and um just actually the possibilities of creating art now we've always thought Oh yeah, you could just wallpaper and do. definitely. Now you can just. I mean, I've got lots of wacky ideas, as you know. That yeah. we we. I'm sure at some point we'll do. But there really is the sky's the limit, isn't it? With creativity, what you can do with people's homes, it's amazing. Yeah. Offices, buildings, anything really. Uh, th- that's what I love most about it. Is a lot of the clients will come to me with quite wacky ideas, and I always sort of say because I can make stuff completely personal and completely unique, it's great for you to say, oh, you like this wall? I mean, no one's going to have anything like this. Obviously, there's a lot of branding around yourself, but with the colours and the stars and, mm. and, and sort of how it flows over the um, over the shelf and over the lights and stuff. Yeah, so, that shelf, that shelf that we thought we were going to have we to rip take... out. And actually, well, the team are very happy that shelf's still there. Yeah. Very handy. Yeah, it doesn't get used, doesn't but get it looks way. good. doesn't get used. doesn't get away. Yeah, so... <laughs> Um, but it's great because a lot of my clients will say, I want this, I want his name, I want certain designs or colour themes, or they like pop art, or they like magazines or mm. games characters. And, you know, I could just paint that, <laughs> paint what they want, make these cool, unique scenes for people. Um, but it's not just kids' bedrooms as well. Um, you know, I can do stuff for sort of like any prints and designs yeah. and stuff, more like mature stuff, for yeah. even like... Um, hotels and offices and um more corporate work as Absolutely. well and you know it's yeah it really it really is a question of just having a chat with you and saying i've got these ideas and it, and it's really inspirational i think actually when you think about it that you started doing something because you love art because yeah. you love to create because you love that that style and then you do something to as a tribute to someone that you love yeah. and actually it creates all these opportunities yeah it just kind of shows that if you sort of follow what you love then it's amazing how it can kind of pay back to you in some yeah. form of you like you have a career now and this is what you believe in passionately you also I mean you've done some work with with myself and um, my my two founders of the I am life project co-founders yeah. um Anna and Matt and obviously that was fantastic we started doing some work and we were we're going to be doing more with that yeah. in the future but it's important to talk about the things that you do with charity as well and also the outdoor workshops that you do um, you did one for me with my children yeah. in, the, in the, you know, when we were able to outdoors. But that's this whole side of your business as well that you're doing. There's a lot. Yeah, that's kind of come off the back um, of what I did at the beginning. So I started off by painting walls, basically, and it was just a thing for myself and for the clients and whatever. And then started doing a few workshops because people were saying, oh, can you 
do it do it with my kids and um you know create some stencils and have a bit of fun and then last year it got really popular in between um covid so before covid was start, starting to get the parties in and then when we had the break in the middle i was able to take small groups of kids um which was actually quite fortunate because they wear masks and mm. gloves and all the ppe and stuff so mm. it was all within the rules yeah. of covid which was great and i was yeah. just fully booked um and then obviously we, we're back into lockdown so that's a real shame so that's something that i'm hoping when we come out of the other side of it we can do a lot more of i'm sure you will um and as you say the charity work as well um i did a piece for tailor made dreams during lockdown i think um it's really hard to gauge when i did stuff because mm. i feel like the last 12 months are just really random it but it was i think it was in between lockdown maybe last year um, and I did a piece for a very special boy mm. who really wanted a bit of artwork. Um, and this is a great example of what they wanted. I, the image is out there on my, I'm sure it's on my website and social mm. media, but he wanted this, a specific sports car in blue. Um, he wanted his and his sister's name in graffiti style. And then mm. he wanted two characters. And I did this piece for them. Um, and, you know, apparently his the reaction, it was just, that was what he wanted. That's amazing. Um, it's amazing charity. And I've been... Uh, you know hopefully and um, there's some stuff in the pipeline with tailor made dreams and that's yeah. just one of the things i'm i'm hoping to get into um and lots of other stuff with sort of working with kids and schools and maybe teaching them something a bit more a bit yeah new. and inspire and inspiring and and giving where you can i think that's yeah. i think that's amazing what would you say would would be one of your real highs you know highlights if you're i mean i'd like to say your long career You've not been around that long, oh, but you've had a good long run so far. So yeah. what would you say out of the many, many projects you've worked on so far? I just, what I, what I enjoy. Clearly my, working with me. Clearly. Yeah. Yeah. This, this one this here one. was just amazing. This and one, you know, yeah, yeah, as a freebie, you must be so grateful. No, <laughs> I, um, the, what I enjoy most out of the artwork is normally the reactions that I get from people. Yeah. Um, so that especially came with Emmett's first portrait about yeah. four and a half years ago. Um, I, it took me two days, so I thought it would take one. Um, and I, I mean, I got down to the park at like seven in the morning, was emotioning the wall, um, by park. I mean, uh, down in Grosvenor and Tom mm-hmm. Twells, they've got mm-hmm. a legal wall that yeah. anyone can go to, which is, which is a good place to start. Yeah, if anyone's brilliant. wanting to get into a bit of street art or <clears throat> anything down that route, you can go and paint the wall for free. So, That's a good too. I didn't know that. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. That's there's, really great. Yeah. It got, um, there's a local artist who actually got it sorted out, um, about four years ago. Apparently it took him two years to actually get the council to agree. That's fantastic. There's a massive wall that was hidden by bushes. And when they cut it back, there's just this really ugly wall, um, which now is like, you know, so vibrant. Um, and That's you get brilliant. some, yeah, big, quite big artists come down. Mm. Lots of people come down from London. Mm. Um, and sometimes you'll see the whole wall will be painted by like four or five guys doing four. What an amazing idea. Yeah. Um, that's kind of where that's that's how I got into it really. Yeah. Um, but back to, uh, sorry to the Emmett piece. So mm. it ended up taking me two days, and like a lot of the time at the beginning, I was so nervous because I'm painting obviously my best mate who is no longer with us, and his mm. family's there, and it was looking really weird at some points, which is natural. Obviously, when you're producing something mm. at some stages, it looks really really weird. Mm. Um, and then at the end, when it's all done, and I can say to myself, I think I'm finished with it, and then you get the final photos um and just like the love from his family especially yeah that's what got me into doing some more of the tribute stuff because it made people so happy and it's such a nice feeling you know when you can help someone else out it's very rewarding for yourself whether you're meaning to or not absolutely so um the highs were sort of completing jobs that you you don't know whether they're going to work yeah um and yeah that's probably probably some of the best parts of the job and so what have you got many i mean what's your plans at the moment i mean no i know you're sort of there's new projects coming up and you opened it you've just had the grand designs things there's more things yeah. coming up. but what are the sort of things that you'd like to be doing more of obviously we talked about the charity work and the work with children but is there anything you sort of think oh, i really <coughs> like to do that you might not be able to talk about it might be a secret there's loads of stuff in the pipeline i've had loads of ideas um to be honest it's all the stuff all the free work, so the stuff that I do for my own enjoyment, they mm. seem to be the most popular, or the political stuff, or the the bits that are more um, social meetups of people. Mm. They're the ones that people really like. Um, so my plan really is just to, I want to paint bigger walls. Um, a lot of the people that I look up to or follow the large mural companies, especially in the UK, but all over the world, you know, 
over in South America and there's like there's massive high rise buildings. Yeah. Um Russia's quite there's there's amazing artwork over in Russia and obviously Europe is absolutely mm. um you know it's it's insane for the street art. So you know traveling around the world and obviously meeting new people from different cultures and painting mm. different stuff with them. Um that's what I mainly aim to do but at the Brilliant. same time more the teaching, more yeah. the helping um and the charity work as well. And I yeah. know that you and I especially we've got stuff planned yeah. coming up which would have been happening by now, but COVID hit. Mm. So like- It's going to be even more need for it though. Exactly. And the more people I'm talking to, the more yeah. there is going to be a need for yeah. helping children. You know, it's like we keep sort of saying, it's we're all locked down, but so are our children yeah. and they're being homeschooled. And str- I'm, I'm, I'm a parent that's homeschooling, that's working constantly yeah. and it's juggling. So there's, and there's, there's people that are really struggling out there that are in, in, you know, not great places where they're stuck at the moment. Yeah. So, I think there's going to be a lot of work to be done Definitely. in the world. Yeah. So I think it's great. Yeah. And also creatively, creative output is fantastic for just mental health and well-being. I think that's the thing. And anyone, just having been to some of your workshops, it's so fun. Yeah, I mean, they are. you know, just just letting kids really go for it. And you're very good. You're very good with some of the you you do. I've seen you, and you do watch how maybe one one child might be a little less open at coming up you know some children are really naturally artistic as yeah. we know and then others that maybe aren't feel a little bit intimidated yeah. and you're very good at bringing that balance out with them so I think you'll be great teaching and yeah. mentoring like that so. yeah it's good you kind of have to make a quick um sort of judgment on on each child mm. and their abilities and some of the great competent ones um I actually quickly try and get them to improve and actually do stuff that the other kids won't even get onto. Mm. But then some of the kids are so shy or nervous or in their own shell about what they want to do. You've got to just get them going with the paints. And what's amazing is you can really quickly like put so much color onto a canvas. Yeah. So sometimes it's just saying, have a go, just, just, just spraying, getting the colors on, mixing the colors, just mm. make a bit of a mess. And quite naturally they'll develop from there. So it, it's not, always teaching them it's 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 more about sort of having fun first and yeah. their their skills and their passion will, will sort of develop if they're having fun they're gonna they're gonna try new things basically and do you think that's kind of a bit of an ethos with your work because I was gonna say how would you how would you sort of um inspire people that maybe maybe they're interested in something you know <clears throat> at the time I mean less so now but certainly 20 years ago street art was not you know it's, it was kind of frowned a bit like you know I'm covered in tattoos and it's much more acceptable nowadays yeah. than it than it used to be thank goodness um thank goodness for me <laughs> and uh but but with with anyone out there that's got a career that's maybe a little bit you know it's not not mainstream or, or young people out there what would you say that would give them <clears throat> sort of you know to keep going it's a bit of passion yeah I just say um I mean I did actually mention it not long ago but the most successful pieces for me are the ones that I do for myself yeah um and it's not always about getting out there and getting paid yeah um you know if if in any stages if I don't ever have a couple of weeks with no work on I'll just mm. work and paint and keep doing it because I've you, got loads of walls you can paint yeah oh actually no now I've said that I'm, <laughs> I'm pretty booked up just um, paint the definitely. whole of the outside I'd love that <laughs> be great but it's like it's really important to Obviously, I need to keep developing mm. um, and progressing because if I stay at this level now, then everyone else overtakes you. Mm. So you've got to get out there, you know, whether even it's through music or dance or, or mm. a different career, whether you're designing or or whatever it is, you need to keep producing work yeah. and showing people that you're here and that you're doing stuff and that you're active. Um, and also, you know, as a, as a as a as a business, you just need to sort of basically be saying i am here and this is this is what i provide this is my service and i'm doing this so for me I've, I've got to keep painting um but then obviously when you get the jobs in and then you start making the money that comes with it as well yeah. so um that's good advice i yeah. think people probably see you coming in your van they, they probably know that you're there when uh, they people, see your van yeah people, if you've seen hugh's van you might know what i'm talking yeah, about parents grab their kids away from the road and they <laughs> you know cover their eyes when when the neon signs go past but but it's great and how long did that take you to do your it's transit isn't it is it transit yeah yeah it's it took me um i think it took me about three days but actually quite fun off that one the video has just been made mm-hmm. so my videographer um he's we did it over three different sittings and we mm. actually started in summer, but I was so busy with, with the house and other work. The beginning of the video, it's nice and hot and I'm there in my t-shirt painting. And then you quickly notice some of the other bits, I'm in a jacket and it's winter, but it was, it's great because it had all the different seasons and we've got drone shots and we took a photo shoot in a car park and it's very kind of 
even for Tunbridge Wells, it's very underground. It's very Love urban. It. Um, but I'll be releasing that video in the next couple of days. Brilliant. Um, but that one there, so that took me probably three days, mm -hmm. um, a lot of work. Um, and obviously, I'm, I'm paying for the video. Mm. So, you know, all the money spent on the paint and the time just to have a one minute video. But that stuff's important because, of course it is. Um, you know, if you don't put the time and effort into your own stuff, you know, people are going to think, are you going to do it? for a client so you've got to believe in what you're doing as well and use and then that way i think if you believe in what you're doing you lead for example and, yeah um a, a great friend of mine said that i i do things for love over money <laughs> that, that could be you know sometimes where i go wrong but i it's ultimately you do things for what you believe in yeah. and what you think is great and i yeah. think that you definitely do that with the pandemic when we come out this pandemic which I'm sure it's going to happen soon as we uh, start to vaccinate the nation. What um what are your plans? What are your are you excited? I mean, obviously you talked about travel, so we'll hope that we've got some yeah. aviation back in the world yeah. and we can get about a bit. But what else? You've got you've, you've done your house. Well, you, not you, quite. You, almost you, getting you, there. You've got to do the bathroom. The bathroom sounds a bit rapey, but yeah. I'm sorry, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's all good. I um. Brick wall is pretty cool, actually, to be fair. I mean, yeah. You could probably do a lot with a brick wall. Yeah, exactly. Um, but when we, coming out, of, coming out of the lockdown and COVID, I guess a lot of making up for the parties have got postponed. Yeah. So within, I think, 48 hours, all of the parties I had booked up, they just all get postponed. So I've yeah. got a list of people waiting to have them. Goodness me. That's got to be done. That's going to keep you busy. Um, and then, you know, just, just the work coming in. New um, projects. New projects, yeah. Mm. Um, personal projects as well. So I've yeah. got a lot of things that I want to paint sort of with with other people and teams but because of lockdown that can't happen at the moment um but you know you spend so many time so long just sitting and thinking i want to do this but like i don't have the time for it at the moment so there's i've got a book of stuff of like to do to do projects with yeah. my own work and my own stuff so um yeah a lot a lot more humor coming out a lot more humor and if people want to find you clearly if they want to find you they can find you through me and yep. the big chat but if they want to find you Web website yeah websites humorstreetart.co.uk um or just social medias yeah um find you. so yeah facebook uh, linkedin instagram all of that so brilliant tap that in and you'll, you'll see some of my work well i love what you do and i think you're a fabulous young man and you know you're a pleasure to work with and i think you know having having worked with you on lots of projects um you've you've got a lot of integrity and you just you're great at getting that creative concept that I mean, a lot of people don't understand me, but you've certainly managed to get some of it out here. Yeah, I think we're on the so, same wavelength some of the time. So I that, think so, that possibly, yeah. <laughs> so, but thank you so much for coming no, to talk to us. thank you very much for having and me. And thank you for, you know, keep keep doing what you're doing and keep inspiring the town. And I think those, like you say, those tribute pieces, political pieces, and just following your heart, yeah. basically, is um, is is leadership in its in its own right for what people can do at the moment. So, you know, keep doing what you're doing. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers. Thanks.